chapter 11. And Nimrod, son of Cush, was still in the land of Shinar, and he reigned over it and dwelt there, and he built cities in the land of Shinar. And these are the names of the four cities which he built, and he called their names after the occurrences that happened to them in the building of the tower. And he called the first Babel, saying, Because the Lord there confounded the language of the whole earth, and the name of the second he called Arach, because from there God dispersed them. And the third he called Eshed, saying, There was a great battle at that place. And the fourth he called Kalna, because his princes and mighty men were consumed there, and they vexed the Lord. They rebelled and transgressed against him. And when Nimrod had built these cities in the land of Shinar, he placed in them the remainder of his people, his princes and his mighty men that were left in his kingdom. And Nimrod dwelt in Babel, and he there renewed his reign over the rest of his subjects. And he reigned securely, and the subjects and princes of Nimrod called his name Amraphel, saying that at the tower his princes and men fell through his means. And notwithstanding this, Nimrod did not return to the Lord, and he continued in wickedness and teaching wickedness to the sons of men. And Mardon, his son, was worse than his father, and continued to add to the admonitions of his father, and he caused the sons of men to sin. Therefore it is said, From the wicked goeth forth wickedness. At that time there was war between the families of the children of Ham, as they were dwelling in the cities which they built. And Chedorlaomer, king of Elam, went away from the families of the children of Ham, and he fought with them, and he subdued them. And he went to the five cities of the plain, and he fought against them, and he subdued them, and they were under his control. And they served him twelve years, and they gave him a yearly tax. At that time died Nahor, son of Sirug, in the forty-ninth year of the life of Abram, son of Terah. And in the fiftieth year of the life of Abram, son of Terah, Abram came forth from the house of Noah and went to his father's house. And Abram knew the Lord, and he went in his ways and instructions and the Lord his God was with him. And Terah his father was in those days still captain of the host of King Nimrod, and he still followed strange gods. And Abraham came to his father's house and saw twelve gods standing there in their temples, and the anger of Abram was kindled when he saw these images in his father's house. And Abram said, As the Lord liveth, these images shall not remain in my father's house. So shall the Lord who created me do unto me, if in three days' time I do not break them all. And Abram went from them, and his anger burned within him. And Abram hastened and went from the chamber to his father's outer court, and he found his father sitting in the court, and all his servants with him. And Abram came and sat before him. And Abram asked his father, saying, Father, tell me where is God who created heaven and earth, and all the sons of men upon the earth? And who created thee and me? And Terah answered his son Abram, and said, Behold, those who created us are all with us in the house. And Abram said to his father, My lord, shew them to me, I pray thee. And Terah brought Abram into the chamber of the inner court, and Abram saw, and behold, the whole room was full of gods of wood and stone, twelve great images and others less than they without number. And Terah said to his son, Behold, these are they which made all thou seest upon earth, and which created me, and thee, and all mankind. And Terah bowed down to his gods, and he then went away from them. And Abram his son went away with him. And when Abram had gone from them, he went to his mother and sat before her. And he said to his mother, Behold, my father has shown me those who made heaven and earth, and all the sons of men. Now therefore hasten and fetch a kid from the flock, and Make of it savory meat, that I may bring it to my father's gods, as an offering for them to eat. Perhaps I may thereby become acceptable to them. And his mother did so, and she fetched a kid, and made savory meat thereof, and brought it to Abram. And Abram took the savory meat from his mother, and brought it before his father's gods. And he drew nigh to them, that they might eat. And Terah his father did not know of it. And Abram saw on the day when he was sitting amongst them, that they had no voice no hearing, no motion, and not one of them could stretch forth his hand to eat. And Abram mocked them, and said, Surely the savory meat that I prepared has not pleased them, or perhaps it was too little for them, and for that reason they would not eat. Therefore tomorrow I will prepare fresh savory meat better and more plentiful than this, in order that I may see the result. 
and it was on the next day that abram directed his mother concerning the savoury meat and his mother rose and fetched three fine kids from the flock and she made of them some excellent savoury meat such as her son was fond of and she gave it to her son abram and terah his father did not know of it and abram took the savoury meat from his mother and brought it before his father's gods into the chamber and he came nigh unto them that they might eat and he placed it before them and abram sat before them all day thinking perhaps they might eat and abram viewed them and behold they had neither voice nor hearing nor did one of them stretch forth his hand to the meat to eat and in the evening of that day in that house abram was clothed with the spirit of god and he called out and said woe unto my father and this wicked generation whose hearts are all inclined to vanity who serve these idols of wood and stone which can neither eat smell hear nor speak who have mouths without speech eyes without sight ears without hearing hands without feeling and legs which cannot move like them are those that made them and that trust in them and when abram saw all these things his anger was kindled against his father and he hastened and took a hatchet in his hand and came unto the chamber of the gods and he broke all his father's gods and when he had done breaking the images he placed the hatchet in the hand of the great god which was there before them and he went out and terah his father came home for he had heard at the door the sound of the striking of the hatchet so terah came into the house to know what this was about and terah having heard the noise of the hatchet in the room of images ran to the room to the images and he met abram going out and terah entered the room and found all the idols fallen down and broken and the hatchet in the hand of the largest which was not broken and the savoury meat which abram his son had made was still before them and when terah saw this his anger was greatly kindled and he hastened and went from the room to abram and he found abram his son still sitting in the house and he said to him what is this work thou hast done to my gods and abram answered terah his father and he said not so my lord for i brought savoury meat before them and when i came nigh to them with the meat that they might eat they all at once stretched forth their hands to eat before the great one had put forth his hand to eat and the large one saw their works that they did before him and his anger was violently kindled against them and he went and took the hatchet that was in the house and came to them and broke them all and behold the hatchet is yet in his hand as thou seest and terah's anger was kindled against his son abram when he spoke this and terah said to abram his son in his anger what is this tale that thou hast told thou speakest lies to me is there in these gods spirit soul or power to do all thou hast told me are they not wood and stone and have i not myself made them and canst thou speak such lies saying that the large god that was with them smote them it is thou that didst place the hatchet in his hands and then sayest he smote them all and abram answered his father and said to him and how canst thou then serve these idols in whom there is no power to do anything can those idols in which thou trustest deliver thee can they hear thy prayers when thou callest upon them can they deliver thee from the hands of thy enemies or will they fight thy battles for thee against thy enemies that thou shouldst serve wood and stone which can neither speak nor hear and now surely it is not good for thee nor for the sons of men that are connected with thee to do these things are you so silly so foolish or so short of understanding that you will serve wood and stone and do after this manner and forget the lord god who made heaven and earth and who created you in the earth and thereby bring a great evil upon your souls in this matter by serving stone and wood did not our fathers in the days of old sin in this manner and the lord god of the universe brought the waters of the flood upon them and destroyed the whole earth and how can you continue to do this and serve gods of wood and stone who cannot hear or speak or deliver you from oppression thereby bringing down the anger of the god of the universe upon you now therefore my father refrain from this and bring not evil upon thy soul and the souls of thy household and abram hastened and sprang from before his father and took the hatchet from his father's largest idol with which abram broke it and ran away and terah seeing all that abram had done hastened to go from his house and he went to the king and he came before nimrod and stood before him and he bowed down to the king and the king said what dost thou want 
and he said i beseech thee my lord to hear me now fifty years back a child was born to me and thus has he done to my gods and thus has he spoken and now therefore my lord and king send for him that he may come before thee and judge him according to the law that we may be delivered from his evil and the king sent three men of his servants and they went and brought abram before the king and nimrod and all his princes and servants were that day sitting before him and terah sat also before them and the king said to abram what is this that thou hast done to thy father and to his gods and abram answered the king in the words that he spoke to his father and he said the large god that was with them in the house did to them what thou hast heard and the king said to abram had they power to speak and eat and do as thou hast said and abram answered the king saying and if there be no power in them why dost thou serve them and cause the sons of men to err through thy follies dost thou imagine that they can deliver thee or do anything small or great that thou shouldst serve them and why wilt thou not serve the god of the whole universe who created thee and in whose power it is to kill and to keep alive o foolish simple and ignorant king woe unto thee for ever i thought thou wouldst teach thy servants the upright way but thou hast not done this but hast filled the whole world with thy sins and the sins of thy people who have followed thy ways dost thou not know or hast thou not heard that this evil which thou doest our ancestors sinned therein in days of old and the eternal god brought the waters of the flood upon them and destroyed them all and also destroyed the whole earth on their account and wilt thou and thy people rise up now and do like unto this work in order to bring down the anger of the lord god upon the universe and to bring evil upon thee and the whole earth now therefore put away this evil deed which thou doest and serve the god of the universe as thy soul is in his hands and then it will be well with thee and if thy wicked heart will not hearken to my words to cause thee to forsake thy evil ways and to serve the eternal god then thou wilt die in shame in the latter days thou thy people and all who are connected with thee hearing thy words or walking in thy evil ways and when abram had ceased speaking before the king and princes abram lifted up his eyes to the heavens and he said the lord seeth all the wicked and he will judge them